Hey everyone, welcome to Plants and Politics. So I have a little bit of breaking news. A bunch of states were suing the United States Postal Service in regards to the mail delays and issues caused by Trump's administration and his new uh, attack dog, Louis DeJoy. So a U.S. judge in Washington named Stanley Bastion just ruled that Trump and his postmaster general the man I just mentioned, Louis DeJoy, executed, quote, a politically motivated attack on the efficiency of the Postal Service. As a result, he has approved a nationwide preliminary injunction, which had been requested by 14 different states that were suing the Trump administration and the U.S. Postal Service. And the judge also said that the changes that DeJoy made created, quote, a substantial possibility many voters will be disenfranchised. Hopefully this comes soon enough because ballots are already going out for the November election. So hopefully this is in time. But the administration and the Justice Department attorney, Joseph Borson, of course, tried to BS the judge. They claim that the Postal Service hasn't actually made a lot of the changes that they've been accused of. And that issues with late mail caused by DeJoy's leave behind policy had actually gotten better since it was first implemented. So if you're not familiar with this, it's really one of the most asinine things that he's done. In fact, it was highlighted on an episode of The Circus. If you're not familiar with that show, it's on Showtime. It's actually really good. I believe it's Showtime. But they interviewed someone who works for the post office, and he was talking about the leave behind policy and how basically DeJoy put in place this policy that the mail trucks had to go out at a specific time. No ifs, ands, or buts. So it didn't matter if they were even empty. They had to leave. So they were sending out trucks with barely any mail on them. And then mail was sitting at, at, the, at these various facilities much longer than they would have been if they had just taken the time to make sure that the trucks were full before the postal carrier took off to make their runs. So it's, it was the biggest waste of time. It's more of a waste of money. So for him to try to say that he was doing this to shore up the finances and help save the post office money is absolutely ridiculous. But anyone who watches the show regularly knows that Trump admitted his goal in making these changes. I mean, he's such a moron that he actually says the quiet parts out loud. And he admitted to Fox News host Maria Bartiromo that he was doing this to impede mail in, in voting for the upcoming election. And Postal Service employees have stepped forward. They've come forward and admitted that they were forced to lie to lawmakers and that they hid mail to make it look like everything was going smoothly. For example, after Congressman Joaquin Castro visited a post office in San Antonio, Texas in August, one of the union leaders for their local postal workers admitted that the post office employees were directed to, quote, give a deceitful perception of how we're doing things. So he admitted that employees were ordered to remove and hide piles of delayed mail before Castro arrived. And the leader of the union estimated that approximately 30,000 to 54,000 pieces of mail were hidden from Joaquin Castro. He also said that some of the mail that they hid from him dated all the way back to March. And remember, I said this was in August. So literally, people's mail had been sitting there, and that was one of the things they talked about on the circus, too. They, the, the gentleman who walked one of the hosts of the show through a facility showed them pictures, or, or I think they showed him pictures and asked him, you know, what are we looking at here? A lot of what was in the picture were white, plain white packages. And he said that a lot of that was prescriptions for people who need their medications. And they're literally sitting in mail sorting facilities for months because of this bullshit 
that Trump and DeJoy put in place and is using so that he can win an election. They're literally putting people's lives at risk. I mean, we already know that with COVID, but he's literally putting people's lives at risk. You've got people who maybe have drugs coming for type 2 diabetes, for heart disease, whatever the case may be. A lot of elderly people have their prescriptions set up to be mailed to them. It's literally criminal. This man needs to be sued for crimes against humanity. Again, I say, where is the United Nations? And Joaquin Castro wasn't the only one. So Florida Congresswoman Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who I am no fan of whatsoever in any way, shape, or form, but she attempted to visit two United States postal facilities in her home state, and she was denied entry. So at the first location, postal service officials told her that leadership had ordered them to prevent her from entering the facility. And a USPS spokesperson claimed that they couldn't set up a tour for her on short notice. However, Wasserman Schultz said that she made other unscheduled visits or or short notice visits, I should say, to the post office earlier this year, and it was never a problem before. So she was just trying to do the same thing she's done earlier in the year before all of this happened, but they didn't want her in there. And employees at the Postal Service are complaining themselves about how horrible things have gotten since DeJoy was put in charge. They're saying that it's not only caused safety hazards because they're forcing them to work at such a fast pace and with basically a skeleton crew. I mean, between cutting hours, between COVID and people being out sick and then people quitting because they can't survive. Like some of these people have said they just can't survive on the basic hourly wage. Um, That was one of the things that DeJoy did. He cut overtime hours and he ended nighttime delivery. And one employee told Business Insider that He had to quit when they took away overtime hours because he and his family were barely getting by when he was working overtime. He said that he was regularly working 60 hours a week and that he and his family relied on that extra overtime money just to make ends meet, just to barely get by. And DeJoy, as I've reported before, is a huge Trump supporter. He's a major Republican donor. So it's obvious that he's trying to sabotage the election. Uh, I mean, I guess if you can't win fair and square and you have no morals, then you cheat. If you know that your guy is so unpopular that he can't win in a legitimate election, then you cheat. Why else would you do it? If you were so sure that your guy was the, was the one, you know, he was the savior and he's the one that the majority of Americans want, why would you go out of your way to play games and to cheat and undercut the other side? Let it be a fair election. Let's see who's really popular. But beyond that, you know, it, it's a pretty damning testimony and a sad state of affairs when you discover that Americans can't survive and cover their bills working 40 hours a week, that's pathetic. That is just pathetic. It's a really, it's incriminating evidence against what's going on in this country and who this country is working for. Especially when you have billionaires like DeJoy who have seen their already obnoxious amount of wealth increase during the pandemic. And this guy just struts in and cuts workers over time as if he knows what it's like to try and survive on an average worker salary. It's sickening. It's absolutely sickening. You've got a guy who he and his wife are both working and he's working 60 hours a week and they're barely making it. But billionaire DeJoy is going to tell them, oh, no, we're, we're going to cut everybody's hours. We're going to make things more efficient. Just sickening. This country needs an absolute overhaul. It is not working for the 99%. It needs to come to an end.
So as always, guys, like, share, subscribe. I will talk to you soon. Take care. Thanks for listening to Plants and Politics. The only way we can take our country and power back is to spread the truth and build an army. So remember to like, follow, subscribe, and share on Facebook, YouTube, and wherever you listen to your podcasts. Thanks again.